let me just begin by saying that I feel uh, quite overwhelmed to be presiding over an occasion that brings together two names that are my favorites in the profession, uh, Amartya Sen and Tony Atkinson. It's always an honor to be invited to give a lecture named after a famous economist. And it's a particular pleasure when that economist is present. It's also daunting since there's always a risk that the famous economist will disagree with what you say or perhaps even worse, disagree with what you say that they said. If we shift our evaluative basis, and in particular, given the location, to look at the use of capabilities as a basis for evaluating, not using willingness of pay, to pay on my equation of a left and right hand side, but the left hand side having the capability enhancing features of public spending. And that seems a very natural thing to do. In the recent survey article by Koshik and his co-author about functionings and capabilities, they say, in trying to empirically compare the quality of life achieved by different societies using the capabilities approach, we may need to focus on a few salient functionings. Do people in society have the option of a long and healthy life? Are people able to live lives free of political oppression? Are people able to read and write? I've taken a branch of economics, public economics, and considered how the current mainstream approach needs to be modified in the light of the idea of justice. And finally, in providing a basis for national policy directed at global justice, one of the important themes of the idea of justice, I have commended the decision by the UK government to ring fence overseas development assistance. So while I've been somewhat critical of my own government and it probably by extension to other governments of what they're doing, I'd like to end on that note because that is an optimistic and constructive note, one I think which is appropriate in a lecture honoring Amartya. Thank you. It would be quite uh, difficult, I would have thought, for someone to give a lecture with the guy sitting there in whose name it is. And I made quite sure when I was giving the David Hume lecture and the Adam Smith lecture that they were not around. <laughs> if you think about implementation theory, it's all about whether it's implementable or not. But there's no such concept as more implementable, less implementable, and so on. And how we, are we ruining the future generations? What can we do? To, to save the future generation from our overspending and so forth. The entire rhetoric has changed because we are not concentrating on the really important thing. I mean, if there's any role to things like capability and human development, it comes from the fact that it is human development is concerned with what we really think are important capabilities, part of that story. I don't think it's all of that story, but part of that story. Okay, so let's take the question there. That's, yeah. I just saw the hand, a hand there. And my question to him is, why is the public less willing to accept distributional arguments now than in the past? Uh, the second question is, uh, in terms of individual freedom, functionings and capabilities, is corruption a dimension of freedom? I wanted to ask, do you recognize that uh, there are maybe some limitations as well to what you suggested uh, in terms of applying a more cost-benefit analysis to these proposals. So in a sense, I think my answer to your question is yes, I agree that we should be thinking not just about one set of calculations and replacing the current set by a different set, but also that in the arguments about a particular program that there may be several sets of considerations and we have to look at the, the, the balance of arguments. It's actually, I do need to add, as I've been told, that these are not just ordinary umbrellas, but they represent innovation of a very unusual kind. In a very, very windy day, 
It will not pull you upwards like a parachute, nor will it open up inside out as umbrellas do. This is actually designed very specially, so very handy in New York, if, uh, in Chicago, more than anywhere else if you're there. So on that note, I'm afraid uh, we have to close now.